How's it going everybody? In this video, we are gonna go over the problem evaluate reverse Polish notation. So this is a medium level problem. Before we get started, I wanna let you know about my technical interview prep platform, Algos with Michael. If you are preparing for coding interviews, I highly recommend checking it out. This platform is different from other coding prep websites because I actually teach you the patterns to solve various categories of interview problems, such as sliding window, top K element and binary search. Learning these patterns is literally like having a cheat sheet because you will know exactly how to approach the problem based on the type of problem it is. Specifically for my YouTube audience, you guys get a discount using the code ALGOHELP. So the description says you are given an array of strings tokens that represents an arithmetic expression in a reverse Polish notation. Evaluate the expression return an integer that represents the value of the expression. And then it also notes that the valid operators are plus minus multiplication and division. So let's look at the first example. We are given an array of two, one, a plus sign, a three, and then a multiplication sign. So in reverse Polish notation, this part of our array is essentially just two plus one. And this is because when you have a specific operator, the operation is being performed on the previous two numbers. And so two and one come right before the plus sign. Essentially, this entire array is represented as two plus one, and then that calculation is multiplied by three. And so we would get nine. So given this input, we would return nine from our function. So to solve this, we are going to be using a stack data structure. And the reason why we wanna use a stack is because we want to process the last elements first. So let's walk through this example. Starting from left to right in our array, we're gonna process the number two. And whenever we encounter a number, we're just going to add it to our stack. So we add two, and then we go to number one, and then one gets added. And then we move forward again to the plus, and th what this means is we need to pop the two most recent elements from our stack and perform whatever operation it has. So we would do two plus one, which equals three, and that means we need to add it to our stack. So three gets added to our stack, and then we continue on. Now we're looking at the number three. Since three is a number, we're just going to add it to our stack, and then we get to a multiplication sign, and that means we need to pop the two most recent elements in our stack, so three and three. So we would do three times three, which equals nine, and then we're going to add nine to our stack. And since we've iterated over all of the elements in our array, whatever's left in our stack would be our answer. So nine would be our answer for this example. So let's look at one more example, example two. So we're gonna be processing these elements from left to right. So starting at the number four, it's a number, so we just add it to our stack. And then 13 added to our stack and then five added to our stack, and then we get to a division operator. And that means we need to remove the recent two elements that were added to our stack, so 13 and five. And notice for this operator, the order matters, and so we're going to do 13 divided by five. It's not five divided by 13, because that would actually give us a different answer. Uh, and so that equals two, and that is going to get added into our stack, so that result. And then we're going to move forward again. We have a plus, and we're gonna remove the two recent elements added to our stack, and do four plus two, which equals six, and that means six is gonna get added to our stack, and since We've iterated over all the elements. The element in our stack would be our answer, so six. 
So as you can see, once you know to use a stack, the algorithm is really simple. Knowing to use a stack is kind of why this problem is a medium and not an easy problem. Just know that since we wanted to process the last elements first, that is why we use a stack, right? Because a stack represents LIFO, which is last in, first out, right? So keep that in mind when, whenever you are looking at other problems. If you have to process last elements first, then you know a stack will need to be used. All right, let's go over the code for this problem. So we are given an array of strings, which could have you know operators and numbers inside of it. And like we discussed, we'll have a stack data structure. And inside of our stack, we're gonna have integers. I know we're given an array of strings, but we're gonna convert those strings to actual integer values. So we'll say new stack. And now we just want to loop over each token in our string. And we need to process each individual operator differently, right? So we could say if the token dot equals a plus, then we're gonna have some logic there. Else if the token equals a minus, else if token dot equals division, and then finally, else if token dot equals multiplication. So those are all of our operators, but we could also have integer values or numbers, right? So we could just do an else statement, which is for all of the numbers, right? So why don't we handle this logic here first? Whenever we encounter a number, a string that represents a number, we want to parse that string to an integer and add it to our stack, right? So stack.push integer.parseInt and then we just say token, right? And so now every time we uh, encounter a number, we're gonna convert it to an integer. And now whenever we are performing our operator you know, calculation, we don't have to worry about strings anymore. So starting with uh, the plus operation, whenever we get a plus, we're gonna say stack.push stack.pop plus stack.pop, right? The reason why we're doing a double pop is because in reverse Polish notation, we take the recent two elements and process them, right? And then similarly for a minus, we'll say stack.push minus stack.pop plus stack.pop. And so the reason why I'm doing this minus in front of the first pop is because in reverse Polish notation, the second pop is what comes first. <laughs> so I know that might sound confusing. So let's say I had two, one, and then a minus, right? This should evaluate as two minus one, which equals one. We do not want to evaluate it as one minus two. That would be incorrect, right? And so in a stack, the one is gonna be popped first, and then the two is gonna be popped second. So all I'm doing is just reversing the sign. Uh, that way we could still do addition. So it makes it a little bit easier to write. And then for division, we're gonna say int num equals stack.pop, and then stack.push stack.pop, divided by the number, right? And once again, the reason why we do this is because say we had, you know, two, one, and then a division operator. We want to do two divided by one, not one divided by two. So num in this case would be the number one. And then when we pop, that would be the number two. So we're doing two divided by one, right? And then for multiplication, it doesn't matter uh, the order for multiplying, right? So we could just say stack.push stack.pop times stack.pop. 
And then when we're done iterating, we can just say return stack.peak because whatever is left in our stack would be our answer. So let's submit, make sure it works. And there we go. So our time complexity for this solution will be big O of N, where N is the number of tokens in our input array. And then our space complexity will also be big O of N because in the worst case, we would have to add every single token inside of our stack. So that's how you solve the problem. Evaluate reverse Polish notation. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I'm going to be releasing a lot more algorithm videos. I'm going to be doing more stack related videos as well. Uh, so yeah, definitely subscribe if this was helpful and you want to get notified of more videos. Also, don't forget to check out my personal algorithm platform, Algos with Michael. If you want to learn the patterns to a lot of these interview problems, it's a great, great resource. And with that, I'll catch you guys later.